Hey everyone, my name is Tristan and welcome to my small workshop in my basement. Today I'm gonna show you how I made this hiccup helmet from the Dragons 2 movie. So let's not waste any time and get right into it. Before designing the templates for the helmet, I drew a little sketch of it just to make sure I was heading in the right direction. After taking measurements of my head, I started drawing the templates that I would use later for my helmet. And of course I cut them out. After that I decided to stick all of the template parts together just to make sure that the shape was about right. And there I'm just separating the templates so that you can see uh, what they look like. The material I'm gonna be using to make the helmet will be some quarter inch EVA foam. And because the foam I use comes in a roll, I have to make it flat using a heat gun. Then I use some pins to hold my paper templates down and I trace them all. I'm using a sharpie but you could use a pen. After that I'm using a really sharp exacto knife to cut all of the pieces out. Those are all the pieces for the right side of the helmet. Before gluing all the pieces together I'm using my heat gun to uh, heat them up and then bend them to shape. And I'm doing this because those are flat pieces and the helmet has to be round. Just make sure you don't burn your foam when you're doing this. Now that all of the pieces are in the right shape, I stick them together using some duct tape and that's just to make sure that uh, the helmet will be the right size for my head. Now that I know that the right side of the helmet is the right size, I can repeat all of the steps for the left side of the helmet. So I trace them out on foam, then cut them out with a sharp knife, and then I shape them with a heat gun. Next, to make sure the two sides of the helmet are even, I just stick them together with more tape. Now it's time to glue the helmet together, so I'm gonna use some contact cement. The way you use contact cement is that you apply some on both of the sides you're gonna glue together and then you wait about 5 minutes so that the glue becomes tacky and that means it's ready to uh, stick together. And when you stick two pieces together it creates a really strong bond and you know that they won't rip apart. So after waiting about 5 minutes for the pieces to dry, I can now stick them together. And this is the base of the helmet all completed. To separate the eyes I cut out a small piece which will act as a bridge and I can stick it down using contact cement.
for the trim pieces, I'm using some one millimeter foam. And to stick them to the helmet, I'm still using contact cement. Because the details are really small pieces, you could use super glue to stick them down. But because I had the contact cement on hand, I'd rather use that. You can see that to brush the contact cement on the pieces, I'm using a paintbrush, but you could use a scrap piece of foam and it would work as well. When you apply trim pieces like this that go all the way from the front to the back, make sure that you apply them straight because if you don't, the helmet's gonna look really really bad later. There's a small arrow shape on the front of the helmet, so to recreate that I'm using a sharp knife and I'm cutting uh, through the 1mm foam and then I'm using a heat gun to open up the pores of the foam and this will shrink it and uh, the cut that I made will appear. This is an easy way to add details to any foam prop or costume. Now I want to create the small trim that goes around the eyes, so I'm going to use the templates that I use to make the parts of the helmet. And this is going to be a great reference as to how to cut the pieces. And there is one of the eye trim pieces. And of course to glue them down I'm using contact cement. The pieces were a bit too long so I had to trim them down. And that looks pretty good. Now I want to create the templates for the back of the helmet and the back of the helmet is some kind of metal plates all on top of each other. So I drew and cut out a template out of paper. And of course then I trace it down on foam, cut it out and then apply contact cement to the pieces and the back of the helmet to later glue them together. and I glue them down one after the other. And that looks pretty good. Now it's time to cover the glue seams. For that, I'm using some quick seal. You can apply quick seal with your fingers and then smooth it out with some water. And make sure you give it at least a day to dry. Now that my quick seal is all dry, I can use some sandpaper to smooth out even more my glue seams. Now I have to cut out the breathing vents that are on the lower front of the helmet. 
For this step, make sure you have a really, really sharp knife because if you don't, the cuts won't look good. And this is how they look. Of course, you can use a heat gun to open them up even more. Now it's time to create super small rivets that will go between the eyes of the helmet. For that, I'm just using more 1mm foam and cutting it out using a really, really sharp knife. And you can heat the pieces up to make them even rounder. Because those are such small pieces, I'm going to use super glue to glue them down. Over those two smaller rivets, there's a bigger one, so I'm going to use the same technique. So cut out the piece, heat it up, and then glue it down with some super glue. There are two panel lines on the top of the helmet and I'm gonna score those out using an X-Acto knife. Scoring means cutting halfway through your foam with your knife and then heat up the foam with a heat gun to open the pores. And there's two more rivets that go on each side of the helmet. So I cut them out. Then I heat them up with a heat gun. And then I glue both of them down using super glue. The next step is to score all of the smaller details that go on the front of the helmet. And of course, to make my cuts open up, I use a heat gun. And there you can see all of the details. The helmet has three rows of spikes, and I made one row uh, off camera, and I'm gonna show you how I made the two other ones. So I start by cutting out some really small pieces out of foam. Then I refine the shape using a knife to make them look a bit more like spikes. Then I use some modeling paste and I dip the pieces in it and I take off the excess. I do this with all of the spikes and then leave them to dry for 24 hours. A day later I use some sandpaper and I refine the shape so that they look a bit more like real spikes. The last step is to mark out where you want to glue those pieces and then you use some super glue and glue them all down. And you should really use some small tweezers because those pieces are really small. Now I'm drawing out the logo that goes on the left side of the helmet. Of course after drawing it out I have to cut it out. And there it is. To transfer it to my helmet, I spray some glue on it 
and then I just stick it down. Of course, after that I use a sharpie to draw all around the stencil. The next step is to score it using a super sharp exacto knife. And then you can open up your cuts using a heat gun. And I think it looks really good. On the other side of the helmet there's some viking writing, so I just trace them out directly on the helmet. Then I score the lines using a super sharp exacto knife and open the cuts using a heat gun. And now the construction of the helmet is completely done. Before painting your helmet you have to seal it. Now you could seal it using some latex or some plasti dip but I prefer using some wood glue mixed with water because it's really cheap. You have to apply two coats all over the helmet. As the base coat of the helmet, I'm using some black spray acrylic paint. And of course I applied two coats. The lower front of the helmet is a brown leather so I'm gonna use some brown and white acrylic paints to make a leather color. Now it's time for my favorite part, dry brushing. For that I'm mixing some black and silver acrylic paint. Dry brushing is when you put just a little bit of paint on your brush and then go all over the highlights of your prop. To make the helmet look a bit more used, I decided to do a second pass of dry brushing using some white. And we are done! the final result and I really love it. It's the first helmet I ever made with my own templates so I think that it turned out pretty good. I made it a bit too small for me but it's not a big deal, the next time I'll make a helmet I'll just make it a bit bigger. So this is the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. If you like what I do consider subscribing and leaving a like to the video. And till next time, I'll see you later, bye!